Hello everyone, my name is Trisha Krishni Lofong Yun and my partners are Rowena Bashir, Ranal Hussain Sharif, Azad Murtada and Lekshana A.P. Raman. And today we will be presenting on the interaction between Staphylococcus epidermidis with skincare products. Firstly, the skin has its own unique ecosystem that consists of billions of diverse bacteria, archaea, fungi, and even viruses, whereby majority of the microbiome is made up of bacteria, followed by fungi and fewer virus. And this ecosystem is also known as the skin microbiome. For years, people have perceived and generalized any sort of bacteria on the skin to be harmful. However, this may not be the case as not all bacteria will bring harm to our skin while certain bacteria are beneficial to our skin. Most of these skin microbes are harmless or common cell organisms that play essential roles, serving as a physical barrier, protect or inhibit our skin from invading pathogenic microbes as well as to modulate innate and adaptive immune systems. The key to a healthy skin barrier for healthy skin is a flourishing skin microbiome. If the skin microbiome is not healthy or compromised, inflammatory skin conditions such as acne, eczema, or psoriasis will arise, which causes harm to the human skin. An imbalanced skin microbiome is caused by the constant exposure to various intrinsic and extrinsic factors, as shown in the slides. Next, I will be explaining about the rationale of selecting skincare products. As our skin microbiome is closely related to our body's health and daily life, but the skin microbiome will be imbalanced or disrupted due to the different factors which causes certain health problems to our body. Therefore, just as the name suggests, skincare products are made for the purpose of preserving, reinforcing and restoring the healthy and balanced ecosystem on the skin. A good daily skincare routine includes a gentle cleansing, protection and moisturization in order to maintain a stronger moisture barrier, hydrated and healthy skin. In recent years, many skincare brands have started marketing biotic or biome-friendly skincare products. These biome-friendly skincare products are infused with biome-specific ingredients which are prebiotics, probiotics and postbiotics, which functions to support and nurture a thriving microbiome community on our skin. Prebiotics in skincare products functions as food or supply nutrients for the bacteria in order to nurture and enrich the skin microbiome. Probiotics are the good or friendly bacteria that support the healthy bacteria that's on our skin. Postbiotics in skincare products uses lysates or non-living byproducts of the good bacteria to interact with the skin's existing bacteria. Hi everyone, my name is Joanna Bashir and today I'm going to introduce the Staphylococcus epidermidis, also called the Staph epidermidis. So the Staph epidermidis grows in a cluster, in a sticky cluster. Hence, when we look at them under the microscope, they look like grapes because they also have a cocoon or roundish-like shape. The, the optimal growth of the Staphylococcus epidermidis is between 30 to 37 degrees Celsius. The order of the Staph epidermidis is Bacillaceae because they are ground-positive bacteria. Their family is Staphylococcae, the genus is Staphylococcus, and the other species of the Staphylococcus is Staphylococcus aureus, which is the most common uh, species of the Staphylococcus. The Staphylococcus epidermidis, the one we are focusing on today, and the Staphylococcus saprophyticus. So how can we distinguish the Staphylococcus epidermidis? First of all, all the Staphylococcus share few characteristics in common. All of them have peptidic glycan layer in their cell wall, which retain the crystal violet dye and stain them either blue or purple. Or purple. They can survive in either uh, aer aerobic or anaerobic environment. They don't have flagella in their structure, so they lack the ability of moving around their environment. They can produce catalase, which convert the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Uh, so to differentiate them, the Staphylococcus aureus is the only one able of producing proteolase, which convert fibrinogen into fibrin. It is also able of fermenting the mannitol. So if it was added into mannitol salt agar, it will turn it into yellow and produce uh, golden yellow colonies. While the isopodermidis is coagulase negative, cannot ferment the mannitol, but is able of producing urease along with the Staphylococcus saprophyticus, uh, which uh, turn the urea into ammonia as well. 
of being uh, of being novel biosin sensitive, meaning if we added uh, Staphylococcus epidermidis into novel biosin, it will die. So it is novel biosin sensitive. So finally, where can we find the Staphylococcus epidermidis? We can find it in our natural skin flora. We can also find the Staphylococcus aureus. So even though two types of the Staphylococcus are found in our natural skin flora, only the epidermidis is the dominant one. The Staph epidermidis is able of forming biofilm layer consisting of polysaccharides and proteins, making it sticky. Therefore, it is able of performing shielding and adhesion. So if the epidermidis got stuck into device, other devices and uh, substance, it will strongly adhere to that device, making it uh, difficult to be killed or taken off of that device. Therefore, if for instance, we were to touch a uh, catheter with our hands containing Staphylococcus epidermidis, we will contaminate that catheter. If that catheter was injected into a patient, the patient will be infected because it is commonly related to devices associated infections. So even though it is harmful when getting inside of our bodies, it is still important for the staph epidermidis to colonize our natural skin flora because it helps us with the development of immune cell subsets. That's it for me, guys. Thank you very much. Here I'll be talking about the role of Staphylococcus epidermidis. So Staphylococcus epidermidis is a widely known beneficial bacterium that engages in the maintenance of our skin health. They play a very important role in the ecosystem as they protect and prevent the microbiota disequilibrium by fighting the pathogens and participating in the skin homeostasis through the production of beneficial metabolites. These beneficial metabolites include products such as glycerin and organic acids. They help our skin by improving the skin moisture retention, maintaining low acidic conditions of the skin surface, and improving rough skin texture. Another important point is that the antimicrobial biosubstances produced by S. epidermidis extinguishes the colonization of the Staphylococcus aureus which is a pathogen that is accountable for an array of skin conditions and diseases such as eczema. So I'm Azad and I'm going to talk about the mechanism of Staphylococcus epidermidis. So the main role of Staphylococcus epidermidis is to protect the skin against any harmful pathogenic bacteria. But how does it go by that? So it has to come with interaction with receptors that you will find on the plasma membrane known as toll-like receptors. So a ligand is going to be produced and it interacts with toll-like receptor 2. And when that happens, toll-like receptor 2 is going to react with toll-like receptor 1. And it's going to create a heterodimeric structure and that conformation of the structure is going to trigger a response from inside the cell. So that response could be, um, so that response is going to be keratinocytes being stimulated. And when they are stimulated, they're going to induce antimicrobial peptides. And this aids, once again, in the protection against pathogenic bacteria. So that induction of antimicrobial peptides is going to open up another pathway called nuclear factor kappa nuclear factor kappa light chain enhanced B cell and basically it's going to alert the B cells to produce pro-inflammatory cytokine cells and this is a protein that aids in any inflammation so it comes to the site and it heals tissue that was damaged or is in the process of being damaged so now this is part two of the mechanism of staphylococcus epidermidis so life of Tachoic acid, which is a structure that you will find on gram positive bacteria like Staphylococcus epidermidis, induces microRNA143 and it has a very prominent role in the regulation of keratinocytes and hence it's very beneficial in inhibiting once again any inflammation that could be caused by pathogenic bacteria, but not only pathogenic bacteria, inflammation that could be caused by trauma on your skin. It's also important to note that when the toll like receptor Two is activated. The plasma member, the tight junction in the plasma membrane increases, and that contributes to the skin's homeostasis. And finally, we're going to talk about the production of bacteriocins. So, Staphylococcus epidermidis it has the potential to produce virulence factors when 
it is um, when you find it in very high numbers and it becomes out of control it can produce biofilm which is very very harmful to your skin so in order to prevent the biofilm from and to destroy any biofilm that is created, bacteriocins are produced and they're produced through the quantum sensing system, which is the interaction between bacterial cells and also a set of proteins are responsible for this. And that will be it. In this slide, I will be talking about the outcome of the interaction between Staphylococcus and skincare products. The outcome that stood out the most was the anti-aging properties that is provided by the S. epidermidis on our skin. What they do is that they release superoxide dismutase, which is a known destroyer of reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen species is a factor that is responsible for the aging of our skin. Hence, various beauty care products that work with the development of Staphylococcus epidermidis on the skin surface have been created to take advantage of the healthy skin benefits that is provided to us by Staphylococcus epidermidis. Moreover, a research was done by Nodake and a team of scientists where they collected Staphylococcus epidermidis from the participants and they cultured it for proliferation. After that, they applied the culture continuously on the participants' own skin twice before sleep for four weeks. This was to increase the colonization levels of Staphylococcus epidermidis. The result of this experiment showed that the treatment increased the lipid content of the skin. They also suppressed water evaporation, thereby improving the skin's moisture retention. Augmentation with Staphylococcus epidermidis also maintain a low acidic condition on the skin surface. Now, let's discuss the positive and negative impacts of Staphylococcus epidermidis towards humans. Firstly, let's discuss about the positive impacts. As epidermidis, when infused in skincare products, have the ability to maintain a healthy skin barrier and prevent skin-based diseases. So, why is this said so? This is said so because S. epidermidis consists of certain antimicrobial properties such as peptides which inhibit selective pathogens that are present on human skin. S. epidermidis together with a bacterial species known as the Staphylococcus hominis is also said to have the potential to treat skin-based diseases like atopic dermatitis. Atopic dermatitis is usually caused by the increased levels of a bacteria known as Staphylococcus aureus that are present on human skin. Therefore, by creating skincare products which incorporate S. epidermidis in it, this will then help reduce the amount of S. aureus present on the skin of individuals with dermatitis, which will then help the individuals maintain a healthy skin microbiome. Now, let's move on to the negative impacts. Now, let's look into the negative impacts of S. epidermidis in skincare products towards humans. S. epidermidis plays an important role in causing skin-based diseases like acne valgaris. Under normal conditions, S. epidermidis is non-pathogenic. However, there are certain cases where this bacteria may turn pathogenic. For instance, a skincare product functions to nurture and promote the growth of microbes on the skin. However, there are some cases where the skincare products are misused or are not used in the correct manner. Therefore, there is a possibility for the overabundance of S. epidermidis present on the skin. When this happens, the S. epidermidis will then play a major part in the formation of acne. Therefore, Due to the imbalanced amount of S. epidermis present on the skin, the bacteria then have the potential to enter the sebaceous gland. Then, together with Propionibacterium acne, which is another bacteria that plays a major part in causing acne, it will then damage the hair follicles on the skin and cause inflammatory effects towards the acne. The common antibacterial treatment to treat acne vulgaris is with the topical use of synthetic antibiotics such as quindamycin, 
tetracycline and erythromycin. So these are the references for this assignment. That is all from us. Thank you so much for watching.